you know, it's... I'm going completely improv based on just my feelings and my initial reaction to finding out that this film costs 100 to $200 now on eBay. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie is now out of print, the Scream Factory Edition, Shout Factory Edition. I bought this last year, like June last year, for about $30. Uh, it's a pretty nice release, you know, you still get, you know, your slew of characters, you get your disc, you get a selection of special features, including an original feature theatrical trailer, and they look back at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie, including new interviews with director Brian Spicer and stars Johnny Young Bosch and Paul Freeman and more. Yeah, it's not a bad, you know, release. It's got a nice enough transfer and whatever. It's not the most amazing thing, and to be fair, it's not the most amazing film in the world, but I do actually enjoy it for, like, the obvious nostalgia stuff, because I did watch it as a kid, and I enjoyed it back when I was a kid. And so I had seen someone that I watch uh, on YouTube, I think it was Cosmonaut Variety Hour, were taught, did a video on it, and I was like, man, this is, like, I don't get nostalgia much, but I was watching, I'm like, man, I, I need to get this film on Blu-ray. So I got it for $33 on Amazon. Now it's triple five times six times that price which is mental i guess the point of this video i kind of want to just briefly talk about is the kind of random films that go out of print like you don't really expect it from uh, you don't know when a film's going to go out of print it's simple as that like the amount of times you have the fear of oh my god i gotta get this now the fomo of it all to buy the film to buy it right now because you don't want it to go out of print and there's like kind of a twofold nature to this. This is firstly like there's the limited edition stuff. There's the boutique limited edition things, the stuff that's limited to a certain uh, select amount of units. They have a booklet or a poster, whatever other bullshit they want to sell you on. You know, the only thing that's ever really actually valuable is like a book of essays or whatever. Like maybe our videos kind of releases and whatever. Or I'd say Criterions, but Criterion never have limited edition releases. There's those releases. Those are the FOMO ones. Those are the, oh my god, I need to get this release on day one to make sure I can get it the limited edition. But then, you know, sometimes you might go back to that same website and months later it's still there. You know, I found this past weekend I went, I got Dare the Locust, which they still had the limited edition version for, so I'm like, great, I'll pick that up. And they didn't have the limited edition version of the Warriors on 4K. I had to get these from the US. That's why I was buying it from that way, from that store instead of the UK version. But they didn't have the limited edition version of the Warriors anymore. So I'm like, oh, that's all right. I'll still get the standard 4K because at least it's a better picture than the imprint version, even though the imprint version has amazing packaging. But like, you know, I don't really need the 4K, but it's a 4K UHD of a really dark film that takes place mostly at night. I could use the benefit, you know, why not? It's that mentality that, like, it's not the limited edition ones that you got to be really worried about. Because those are the ones, yeah, if you have the money, put it in, whatever. At least you know that if it runs out, all you're losing is, like, maybe a poster, art card, slightly different packaging, a booklet. You know what you're missing out on if you don't buy it immediately, unless it's a really insane package like they had for The Exorcist last year or stuff like that. But then the standard releases, like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I know it's still a Shout Factory release, but that's out of print now. How do you know, how do you ever know when a film that's just a standard, very basic release is just going to go out of print, and what's going to happen with it? Like, obviously the print, the rights go back to whoever owns it, but then what are they going to do with it? Are they just going to leave it be, or are they going to fish around for another Blu-ray company to do something with it? Do they even care to do so? It's, it's a weird concern, because, I mean, this could be the same for even just the most regular, off-the-shelf Blu-ray that you get at your regular retailer. For us in Australia, for JB Hi-Fi, for, you know, the US, it'd be like, does, is it Best Buy that stopped doing physical media or Walmart? Either way, one of those, you know, just your regular stuff, whatever HMV, whatever store you get regular Blu-rays from, and suddenly, bam, they're gone. Like, you can't find Alien on 4K anymore in Australia because it's out of print. The only version that's available is, like, the UK version. I think there might be a US version, but you have to import and so it's just, these are just standard films, standard popular films that most people would get. I mean, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers isn't a standard popular film. It's a, you know, I mean, I'd say it's not, not standard, but like 
I wouldn't say the common person would want to have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in their house, but a nostalgia baby person like myself, or someone who is just a big fan of the franchise, loves the films, loves the show, you know, a passionate fan, they would have it. So, of course, those are the people now who are going to fork out hundreds of dollars to get a Blu-ray release of fucking Power Rangers. And again, no diss towards Power Rangers. I enjoy it. I love the film. But it's Power Rangers. Like, there's, there's a mentality of, that's kind of goofy. You know, like, um, my friends, I wanted to buy... Uh, for my mate Phil for his birthday I wanted to buy a bunch of Godzilla films for him because he didn't have like any of the Japanese releases except for the Criterion set and I'm like damn there was like the Hazy series there's the Millennium series there's so many amazing films that you still haven't watched like he loves the posters for the Hazy series like stuff like Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla whether the films are good or not it doesn't matter the posters are immaculate so I'm like I have to get these for him and I had these Madman DVD releases all four volumes two for Showa one for Hazy or it's Heisey, I don't remember but and one for Millennium and even when I had bought them, I'd bought them young, years and years and years ago, because I was just a fan of Godzilla, I'm like, I gotta buy these, why not, that'd be fun. Thank God I did, because they go for hundreds of dollars now. Someone was selling all four of them for $800 on eBay, which is insane. But then at the same time, I'd also gone looking for like Blu-ray releases, or just other versions that can expand upon the sets. For example, the Hasey series doesn't have... The first film in the fucking series, it doesn't have Godzilla 1984 or The Return of Godzilla. So I had to buy that, which I was able to find for like $30 odd a Blu-ray release. Again, DVD upscale, but at least it was something. And then I needed Biolante. And Biolante, the Blu-ray, three four hundred dollars The DVD, 30 to 50 It depended. It, I, I still spent more than an average Blu-ray. And got probably what looks exactly the same as the actual Blu-ray itself. Like, the DVD quality is fine. But it's that kind of thing of all these films that are on Blu-ray are just upscaled from DVDs. So the DVDs are fine to get it as they are. But the possibility that, you know, Criterion might be getting their hands on them, that was nice. But that's the same thing. I went looking for these films and I just could not find them unless I had to spend really, really high or get a couple of Blu-rays or DVDs from random places, so I gave up, I didn't bother. Uh, I got on the Ray Harryhausen set instead, so it's just, it can be a tricky thing when you just don't realise that the films that you love or the films that you want to get are gone, you know? This doesn't happen as much for films that maybe, for example, I haven't seen, you know? Because a lot of the time when I'm buying films, I'll be buying stuff that I will never have seen. Majority of the stuff, actually minority of the stuff on my shelf now, is things I have not seen. But at the same time, some of them are like limited edition things or not standard version releases. There's a bunch of imprint releases I have that you go through the slip cover version, limited edition, out of print. But now they've got standard editions. And now the standard editions are out of print. The standard editions, the basic versions without the slip covers, without any fancy stuff that look fine on your shelf, but slight embarrassment from never actually buying the slipcover version, and now they're out of print. It's like, what is going on? Even the standard versions are going out of print? They're not saying that they're limited in number, they just vanish. And it's a weird thing, especially for like, again, like I was saying with films that I have never seen before and I have no interest in actually buying, but then occasionally I'll stumble upon someone talking about, I think there's a Kevin Smith one, the... I can picture it in my brain. It's the one with the angels and stuff. You know which one it is. It's got like Matt Damon. I think it's got Matt Damon. Definitely has um, <laughs> Ben Affleck in it. But it's those kind of films like Chasing Amy and whatever. And it's not Chasing Amy. I know it's it's the one with the angels on the cover. It's that one. Either way, that one goes for hundreds of dollars. And it's a pretty standard film. But again, the only reason it hasn't been reprinted, I know, because Harvey Weinstein has the rights to it and Kevin Smith doesn't want to have to pay him to get another Blu-ray produced, which is annoying, obviously. It's like literally making a deal with the devil. Like, you've got to pay the devil, but you get something really good out of it. But you have the embarrassment of having paid the devil to literally get the good thing. It's, 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 it's a hell of a conundrum for him. But yeah, it's, a, it's just a weird situation to be in when you love films, 
and you love physical media and standard common films or even uncommon films just come and go from physical production will just be there and suddenly vanish and you'll never see them again and maybe just maybe they'll come back from some country or some label in a different part of the goddamn planet and you might be able to get that version but for the most part you kind of got to go with what you got to go with i've been seeing a lot of people on reddit lately say like oh I'm trying to get more Blu-rays, which ones would you suggest? And most people are just going down to the foundational level of buy films you want to buy. If there's another film that you're interested in, maybe do some research, maybe look, view it on streaming. Like, like, see it first before you buy it, just so you're, like, you're not wasting your money or something, you know, because you might hate it. I bought Immaculate today, the Sydney Sweeney film because I missed it in cinemas, and I bloody well hope I like that film, you know, but, like, there's plenty of films I've spent a hundred or so dollars on. Hopefully I like those films. Actually, for the most part, I actually have, like, Roadhouse. I spent, like, nine seventy dollars on it, and I was just, like, really concerned, but I loved it, loved the film, loved the transfer, loved the packaging. It was just one of those, oh, my God, thank God, I absolutely adore this film. It's uh, very much a concern, so it's, it's, it's the up to you as the purchaser as the consumer do you buy every single film you see and exhaust all your expenses and then some other label will be like here's a limited edition version of this that's only got 2,000 units you got 12 minutes to buy it oh look at that you've got no money because you keep buying other movies or do you hold back you buy the ones that you really want to buy that you absolutely love those films or like I've heard a lot of great films things about this film I've heard a lot of great things about this film I like the director I like the actors I like the idea of it I'm gonna buy it because it's the best version available and turns out yeah you like it or maybe you don't it is what it is so yeah I obviously won't decide for you but it just is a it's a strange fear of knowing that films that can just be something that pop up one day to you like that's a good price for that film I should keep that on my Amazon watch list What's that? A year later, it's gone, and I can't get it back. It's never coming back. I can't get Gravity Falls, the Blu-ray, gone, out of print. I will probably never be able to buy that show, and I love that show. And I have to watch it on fucking Disney+. Plus. So I should have bought it, but it was always a couple hundred bucks, and I'm like, ugh, it's so expensive. So, yeah, you live and you learn, and you just hope that maybe one day it'll come back in print, or you'll happen to find a really, really cheap copy somewhere. A lot of people have been finding that one Kevin Smith film. For some reason, people keep finding it. I, I wouldn't be able to find it in Australia because we don't get region A releases here. But um, then again, I did find that something Midnight, uh, Midnight in Paris film, the Woody Allen film. I found that once at a Savers, which was like $2. And I'm like, I'm oh, sure. Good cast, Woody Allen, questionable person, but... Two bucks? Sure. That's a rarity. That was a Region A copy. I'm like, most people would not even know that that was a problem. So, yeah. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, what films do you hate that you missed out on that are common releases of, like, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? I know it's technically not common because it's a Scream Factory, but still, something that's just banished from the ether. Like, no, I've missed out on Alien 4K. I don't know, whatever. Let me know down below. See you next time. Adios.